Good day, gentlemen. Welcome back to the Village Clockmaker. I'm James. Uh, today we're going to make a spider. And for those of you who don't know what a spider is, uh, this is a spider. It's a piece of metal made into a jig that uh, this one is for a six inch, um, a six inch three jaw chuck. And what it does, the three jaws go in here and it holds your workpiece out from the base of the, of the chuck out to the ends of the, if you don't want your workpiece set deep into the jaws of the chuck, you need a spider to hold it out to the outside ends of the, of the chuck. Um, let me set, reset the camera. This is our problem today. Is um, I already went and cut another concrete wheel for a clock. There it is. Uh, this is this is the old one actually, and it's hard to see, but the tips of these teeth are all bent over. And that happens when somebody who's not aware of what they're doing um, lets this wheel spin with, with uh, pressure on it when it's wound up in the clock. And then they touch the pinion to it while it's spinning and it just bends the top of the teeth right over. And it happens more often than you'd think. I've, I did it once. So here's the new wheel that we cut. You've seen this in other videos. There. And now what we have to do, we've, we've drilled a hole in the center of that, but a drill never makes a good hole. If you want a really good hole, you have to drill it out and then bore it on the lathe to get a perfectly centered hole. Because a drill is usually, if you look at them real closely, especially if it's a big drill, you can see this sort of three-sided. So we need to hold this in here, but we don't want it way down in here. It's got to be out here to the tips. So I made this. This is just a piece of aluminum round bar that I've turned off and faced. And this is going to go into these four jaws. And to do that, we have to cut, let me get a, we have to cut a slot, four slots, one, two, three, four, at 180 and 90 degrees. Um, so that's our first project. Uh, I chose the four jaw instead of the three jaw. This is from the, the Harnage lathe, the Harnage cataract, uh, because this has to be dead accurate within half a thou or a thou. And to do that, you really have to, to, uh, uh, put it into a four jaw and then uh, we have to indicate that in the four jaw to make sure that it's dead center. So the next question is how are we going to hold this in the mill when we have to cut four slots in it? And I figured the easiest way is with the mini pallet. I don't know if you remember this but um, we made this quite a while ago. Uh, this is just a three-quarter piece of aluminum uh, and it has this goes in the this goes in the the uh, vise on the mill and it's been all indicated and make to make sure that's why it's marked here front to make sure that everything is accurate I don't have enough room here because I'm so jammed up with work that I'm working on the edge of the bench. So I figured we'd put this in here and uh, we want to put something underneath it so we don't ruin I, I hate to ruin my my mini pallet. By the way I got this from uh, one of Tom Lipton's videos. If you haven't watched him check out Ox Tools. He's wonderful. Um, Okay, so the first thing we have to do is drill a hole in this, and then we're going to bolt this right down through like that, 
and then we're going to take it over to the mill. Okay, I just drilled a hole in this uh, piece of scrap. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, it's in focus, I think. But can you see that that hole is not round? It's actually sort of three, it's got three flats on it, on the sides, and that's what a drill does. So uh, you, can't, uh, you can't use it if you want to be accurate. So, see how this is going to work. Helps if you get it in the hole. I'm assuming that that's not going to move. If it does move, well, now we can't because we got those on there. We could do it this way. No, I'm assuming that's not going to move. Um, so we'll go with this. I'll see you over at the mill. Okay, I've got it all set up. I've already cut one side over in this side. And we're going to cut the other side. And since this is a uh, four jaw chuck and we have to cut four slots, we can just use the, uh, the mill to go X and Y. So we don't need to put it in a, a, a rotary table or anything like that. This is, this is pretty straightforward. a small mill so I get a little bit of vibration not a bridge for it the width of the jaws is 7 16 so I'm using a half inch end mill give me a 30 second on either side and most of this just by eye this is not something you have to be real accurate about because they'll probably only use it once and maybe never use it again so it's, it's just a temporary jig Okay, so now we'll go to our uh, DRO and I'm going to go out here and over here. One's probably 90, 80. Okay, that's zero on the X. So why I'm using a roughing cutter. As I said, I'll probably never use this thing again or throw it away. And I just want to be sure that it's, uh, it's done, but I, I need to do it in a hurry. I'm feeding it by hand, too, so...
Okay, so we can go over to the other side. the way that I don't think I'm deep enough right here can you see that right here so I'm going to recut it as long as I've got the DRO going Those are okay. Okay, we'll take her apart, see if it works. Looking for the Allen wrench, which I put back in the can. Well, it looks all right. We've got a lot of filing to do. Let me uh, deburr this and I'll be right back. Okay, we got our deburred. Looks pretty good. It's the smallest one I've ever made uh, and the quickest. So let's see. Let's see if it fits. Yep. Yeah, it's just what we want. And now we can hold our concrete wheel up at the top instead of way down in the way down in the uh, jaws. So um, next thing we need to do is put this in the uh, in the lathe and uh, indicate it and uh, we'll bore that center hole out so that it's absolutely perfect and then we have to make um, this part here I gotta 
that jammed on there. Hold on. There. This part right here, this hub, this hub, we have to make that, right? And then we have to bore out this hole to, uh, actually we'll probably ream that because it's so small. We'll ream that hole to press fit on this, on this arbor. Goes on like that. Okay. So that'll be part two. This is, this is part one. I'll see you next time around. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you like this kind of work, please tell your friends and subscribe and share. And um, I'll see you next time. Thank you.